All right, Texans fans, you know we love you. Like we, you know, you know it. Um, hey, if you have, if you're new to this channel, Sports Talk Extra, it's our second channel. We're Lions fans. We have another channel called Sports Talk Detroit. But we love teams that the national media doesn't pay enough attention to. And I think the Houston Texans have always been one of those teams. We have a love for that. And um, I think it's hard when you're doing a Texans video not to just talk about C.J. Stroud. But we're not going to do that in this one. So we're actually going to talk about the other guys. So leave a comment on this. Who is the player that you think for the Texans not named Stroud that is absolutely balling out the most? Like, who is the guy for you and we are going to shed light on two not one but two rookies that i feel like just quite frankly aren't getting the love they need to get some love all right from people because i'm telling you right now they're good all right so they're good and with the two and three start it was a tough loss to the Falcons this week all right but you still have to be excited about what you have seen from this team if I told you you'd be two and three to start the season you would have taken that I know you would have all right so don't be upset about it so who are these players that we are talking about and the first one is the number three overall pick and I don't know what it's like down in Houston. All right. By the way, my brother-in-law lives in Houston, but I don't know what it's like down in Houston right now, but nobody's talking about Will Anderson on a national stage. It's just not happening. And the dude is playing. And I think one of the reasons it's not happening is because he only has one sack through the first five games, but there's so much more than that. This is a website of the top 10 rookies thus far. And he came in at number 10. I'll show you some of the other players. But it says Anderson has been slightly overshadowed, slightly, all right, not on the national stage, in Houston, but still fantastic in his own right. The edge rusher has just one sack in five games, but he has added 21 tackles, a blocked field goal to go with it. Anderson's pass, pass rush win rate, this is the big one, of 30.1% is third best in the league. Not third best by rookies. Third best in the league. All right. He's getting to the quarterback. And as the season goes on, he'll start to get closer. All right. All right. So they also talk about how his flashes have been notable and all that kind of stuff. Um, and they believe that he will end the season with double digit, digit sacks. So that means in the next 12 games, they think he's going to have nine sacks or more. Okay. We saw this in Detroit with. Aiden Hutchinson, he got off to a slow start, and then it clicked for him. And Will Anderson is different. But here's what I'm telling you. He's even more of an athletic freak than Hutch. But here's what I'm telling you is so impressive about um, Anderson. He, with those 21 tackles, he is tied for first amongst all edge rushers in tackles, in solo tackles tackles now he's at I, I mean pff has it at 22 so his solo tackles are at 17 that is number one against all edge rushers and when you drafted will anderson what did you know you were getting i mean you knew you were getting a guy who could pin his ears back and go after the passer you knew you were getting a pure edge rusher but did you know what kind of a run defender he was going to be and I think this is the thing that happened in college. And maybe it was just, just this thought of, well, it worked in college, but I don't know if it's going to work in the NFL. When you look at his grades over the last couple years, okay, his pass rush grade in college was an 85.8. His run defense grade was an 86.7. Like, think about that for a second. He actually graded out as a better run defender than he did as a pass rusher. But I think everybody just thought we are drafting him because he is a phenomenal pass rusher and a phenomenal athlete and has remarkable speed. So much more than that. In fact, his run defense is graded higher at a 73.8 right now than his pass rush, which is a 67.7. He's still learning the moves. He can't rely on his speed as much. But just that raw athleticism, that raw, quite frankly, skill is allowing him to get to the pass rusher. But it is because he is technically sound 
and he has a high enough motor that he is a good run defender as well. So that's the first guy I told you we'd talk about too, but that's the first guy that I want to talk about in this. And if you go um, in this article, what they do, and by the way, do you agree with the people who are above them? Bijan at nine, Laporta at eight, Christian Gonzalez at seven, Branch at six, two lines, just in case anybody's wondering, Devin Witherspoon at five, A-Chan, um, which is how we're pronouncing it now, at four. That's unfortunate with his injury, especially because he's on my fantasy team. Puka Nakua at three. Carter at one at two and CJ Stroud. Are you bummed by that at number one? All right. You can't be bummed by that, but then it goes on to say who, which late rounders overperforming right now. And they give a shout out to, um, linebacker Henry to to'o. Now it's another guy, I believe out of, uh, Alabama. All right. So he's out of Alabama. He was drafted in the fifth round by you guys. I think at like 169 overall or something like that. He is a dude that when he came out and he was drafted, here's what the, here's what kind of the thought process was on him. Not that big, not that fast, not slow, but not that fast. And he missed tackles like crazy, but he is a very good read and react type of guy. He is a true linebacker. He understands how to play the position, and he is a kind of not a tackling machine, but he gets a large amount of tackles. And coming out of it, um, that's kind of what you saw. That's kind of what you saw. So his run defense grade was good coming out of college. Um, not great. Not great. That's why he's a fifth round pick. And he had a missed tackle rate of almost 15%, which puts him in definitely the bottom half of linebackers in college football. So now he's come to the Texans. He's got 39 tackles. 28 of those are solo. It's tied for 20th in the league, by the way, in tackles, period. All right. And he's a rookie, which is fantastic. But he also, according to PFF, has 11 missed tackles. So of the 39 tackles, he has 11 missed tackles. So he could be at 50, like he could be at 50, but he stepped in the middle of this D'Amico Ryan's defense, which has been known for having phenomenal, phenomenal linebacker play. Unbelievable. All right. His instincts against the run and in coverage have continued to stand out. I get it. All right. So. He is another player, and I would say he actually looks a little bit more fluid and quicker than I thought he would. So the question is, is what do they do to get him to be tackling it at a little bit higher rate? But I do agree, and I don't even know if I, you know, I said I agree. I don't think I agree with that he's overperforming right now. Now, is he playing better than a fifth-round pick? Yes, but he's playing exactly how I expected him to play, and I think how many of you probably expected him to play. He is read and react. He's getting to the ball. He's in position to make a play. And he is have a missed tackle rate that's much higher than you'd want it to be. But if you can work on that, if he can get the tackling thing down, he is in position and just has a nose for the football. So those are your two guys. Don't forget about me. All right. Will Anderson, Henry Tootoo. Don't forget about these guys. They are the reason the Houston Texans, it's guys like this, getting performances from rookies on defense that is allowing this team to be so, so much better right now. All right, hope you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. Like it, hit those comments, and we'll see you on the next one.